Hi everyone, this is Terry. I've been thinking about what can you design with circles and how can you use the stitches that are either built into my design center or into the embroidery side because our challenge this month is stitch stacking. But how can we create something with circles and then stitch those out and use them for quilt blocks? So here I've designed a little sample in my design center. Now, several of you have asked how you can create some quilt blocks and we'll use part of this to show you how to, to create a quilt block. And then I'll also show you how to go about creating this sample pattern. One of the things I was thinking about, it would be neat if you had these and you split them in half and they were in a quilt block and you had a piece of fabric in between. So you have some broken circles. I mean, you one of the things you can think about is if you're going to create something, create something that is more modern. So let's save this right now and save it into memory. And I'll show you how I created this and I'll show you how we can add a little bit more to the outside of our design so we can create a quilt block. So what we'll do is we'll just go home and we'll go to my design center. Now what you want to do is to, first of all, select a hoop size. And I chose the nine and a half by nine and a half. Now, if you wanted it to be a hoop size, that you have a stitch line, let's say, because you're wanting to cut that block at nine and a half by nine and a half. Let me show you what to do. I'll go ahead and make this 10 and 5 eighths by 16. Then I'll go into shapes and we'll select the hoop and let's choose the nine and a half by nine and a half. Okay, you can actually add a stitch line around the outside of this if you want. And what we'll do is we'll just add a single stitch. And what that'll be is something that you could use to square it off if you wanted to. Or if you decide you don't want it to be a stitch line, you can make it a no sew line. We'll just go ahead and make it a stitch line so I can show you what I'm talking about. So I'll take the bucket and I'll apply that to the outside. And you notice what I did is I selected the wrong area. This is for the fill. That's all right, just choose undo. We need to take the bucket and touch the line here. And by the way, if you wanted it to be a no sew line because you want it to be a boundary, then you would just take the no sew line and you can take it and apply that bucket. So let's do that because that is something that I do quite a bit. Now what we'll do is we'll start working with our circles. Now we have the nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. So I want this to fit inside the circle. So I think what I'll do is I'll go to the size of the first one and I'll make this like eight inches. So if you hold it down, it'll rapidly go to eight inches. And now I'll just click till I get a perfect eight. All right, because I want to leave a little bit of this area open on, on the side. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'll, I'll center that and I'll go ahead and choose to duplicate it. So now I have the second circle. I could have gone back to my shape, but it's an extra, extra step. I'm a little tongue tied today. I don't know why, but I am. So we'll go ahead and move this to six inches. All right, and there we go. Now you can make sure it's in the center by selecting the center and we'll move it back to perfect six. All right, now what we're going to do is duplicate that and let's go ahead and size the last circle and we'll make that one four inches. All right, and let's center it. 
So we now have all of our circular designs. Now while this, the interior circle is selected, let's go ahead and select a fill. And I'd like to put circles inside that circle, but I'm going to make them a little bit irregular because that way it'll create something that's an interesting design. Now let's add some stitches on the outside. And the nice thing is with the Luminaire, you now have several new stitches. On the Dream Machine, you have, depending on which one you have, you have the Candlewick stitch and the Chain stitch, but you now have a Blanket stitch, you have a V stitch, and then you also have these Motif stitches. And I really like those. So let's choose a stitch for the inside and I'll choose number one. It's already selected and I'll choose okay. Now let's pick a different color. We'll pick purple and I choose dark colors when I'm sharing this with you and I just made a mistake. So I clicked on the wrong thing. What I want to do is to select the bucket I was going to say, when I'm showing something on the screen, I want you to be able to see it. All right, if you don't think you have applied it, click again and you'll hear an audible sound. Now I have mine turned down and I do that because of the videos, but you can turn it up and you can hear this click, click. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and let's select another decorative fill and let's see i remember what i put on the outside i think this is what i use so we'll use it and let's take a green and we'll choose okay and we'll fill this with the bucket right here and by the way if you took the the brush you see what happens this you can draw with this and you can actually create some interesting effects with it i just don't want that so i'll clear it so now we'll select a stitch for the next pattern. And I think what we'll do is we'll select something different than I had last time. I think what I'll do is I'll choose this little stitch here. Actually, I'll choose this one and we'll choose okay. Now, let's choose a different color and we had a green let's choose a, a blue and we'll take that and we'll take the bucket and apply it all right so we'll fill up the next area by the time you go through this a couple of times you're going to find that it's very easy for you to design and my recommendation is go buy some muslin uh, like i was at hobby lobby the other day and they have bolts of muslin that are very inexpensive or relatively inexpensive let's put it that way and that's what i use uh, i stabilize it well and i test test it out so we'll take the bucket and let's apply that all right, now we need a stitch on the outside and let's select an, another stitch. And I'm trying to use these new stitches because I really like them. And I'll choose okay. And on that one, I'll make that a fuchsia. I'll take the bucket and apply that. Now what we'll do is we'll add a couple more uh, designs out here on the perimeter. So let's get some shapes. And since we have circles everywhere else, maybe we'll create something with some interest and have a different shape. So let's look at some of our options here. You could take one of these little flower motifs. And right now it's fairly large and you may not see it, but let's resize it. And what I like to do is move it down, take the arrow and move it down. And we can move it over to where we're planning on placing this and resize it so it's a good size. And let's see what that looks like. Now what you 
might want to do is you may want to open up your grid. So you'll go into your settings and here's your grid and you can set this up on um, three eighths which are one inch and what this will do is it'll allow you to find a reference point but you also need to be able to see where you're placing that relative to your other design and inside your hoop. What I'm going to do is I'll just move it here and I'm going to turn off the grid because it's really busy. So let's turn that off. And the designs that are really pretty, somebody really has worked on getting everything lined up. So I duplicated that. I'll move this here. And let's duplicate it again. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking at this and trying to line it up as best I can and we'll duplicate it again. One of the things you can do is you can use a reference point like where that uh, design square is touching the circle and that's what I've been trying to use. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go back and let's fill that portion. So we'll go back out and we'll select a stippling stitch and let's choose a light color and we'll take that take the bucket and let's apply that around the, the design now let's get a stitch to put around the little um, flowers and I think for that I'll use a, let's see I don't think you would want a motif stitch because that's going to be too large. So let's choose a triple running stitch or a satin stitch, but I think I'll do a triple running stitch and we'll take that color green and we'll just take the bucket and let's apply that to all of these. All right, and now let's fill the inside. So on the inside, we'll choose a gold color. And this is a small area, so you really don't want too much of a stitch, but you want something that will show up. And we'll use number 13. And we'll go ahead and take the bucket and apply it. All right, now what we want to do is go to next. And now what you're looking at is your stippling. I'm going to go back into millimeters. So we'll go to page nine and change it to millimeters. And what we'll do is we'll leave this right here is the stipple and it's relatively small. You can make it larger. Uh, this is a stitch length. Leave your stitch length at a small length because you this is working through some tight curves. But I am going to decrease that spacing to eight mil eight millimeters. Now let's go ahead and select the next stitch. Now we're looking at the little designs that are in each of the corners. I'm going to leave those alone, but I want to turn off the outline. And someone asked what that means. So let's take the hand and let me show you what happens. You can now see there is an outline stitch that's going around this. And that could be the triple running stitch, but let's turn the outline off and then choose OK. And let's wait a moment till we see the stitches. And you can see now that you still see the running stitch that's going around that design. 
Now, I do want that to apply to all of my stitches, so I should have linked it. So let me do that and link it. And when I say all, I mean all of this particular pattern. Let's go to the next, and I'll select the 100% so we can see where we are. It's now selecting the next block. I've already chosen that block and made changes, so I don't need to, to change it. I linked it together. Now we're looking at the stitch that's in the inside of this circle. And I want to turn off the outline and choose OK. And we'll go ahead and select the next one. We're now looking at the stitch on the inside right here in the, the middle circle. And we'll turn off the outline and choose OK. And now we're looking at the interior. Let's turn off the outline and the other thing I want to do is I want to go to random shift because I want this to look more like pebbles. So we'll change our random shift to three. All right, let's go ahead and continue. We're now looking at, again, the stitch in the center or the corners and we've already dealt with it so I'm passing that up. Now this is a triple stitch around this design. If you feel like your the triple stitch doesn't do it for you, you can change it and what you can do is link all of those stitches and you can choose a different stitch. So if I decided that instead of that stitch that I wanted it to be a candle wick stitch, I could do it. Let's see what it looks like. And this is where you can change the size of your candle wick stitch. We'll give it a moment. And I actually like that, so we'll leave it like it is. And then we're going to go ahead and go through and find this real pretty like argyle looking stitch and one of the things you can do with some of these stitches is you can first of all you can increase the size of it that's the first action the second is the spacing so if you want them spaced apart you can do do that you can also flip them so we could see what it looks like flip We'll give it a moment. And with a stitch like this, you really don't see much difference or any difference at all. So we'll leave it as it is. And we'll go ahead and go to the next stitch, which is this pretty uh, stitch here that reminds me of kind of an Egyptian pattern. And I'll leave it as it is. And we'll select the next one. And this is a pretty little motif that's on the inside of the circle. And I like that. So that's everything. So now save this to memory. Because if you don't like something, you can always come back and work on it and change it. Let's say that you decide that you don't want these little motifs out here. And you just want the, the stippling. You can do that. So we'll choose set and now it's going to convert it to embroidery. So let's look at what this looks like and we'll zoom in. And here's what our block would look like. Now, one of the interesting things about something like this is you may want to watch it sew out and decide if you like it. So let's watch it sew out. And one of the other things that you may want to do is you may want to change the stitch order because some stitches may push everything to the center. And that's one reason why I always create samples of something like this. I don't ever just stitch this on my good quilt shop fabric without trying it out. Now, other people may do that, but I guess they're a little more venturesome than I am. So we can speed this up.
and you can see what it's doing is creating all the fills and now it's going to go back and sew those outlines. And just like that, you were able to stitch out a beautiful quilt block using the stitches that are built into your machine. And you have such a variety here, you can change them up however you want. Well, I hope this video is helpful to you. If you have questions, I'm always here to answer them. Join us in the Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. We have several people in that group that are very talented and everyone is willing to help the next person. And by the way, just because these are the colors for this design, you can go in and go to edit and change your thread colors. In fact, I would change my thread colors. This probably wouldn't be by color choice, but on video, I want to make sure that you can see it. So for instance, let's say that what I want to do is to change this harvest gold color that's here, and I want that to be more of a reddish color. I can do that. And if I want to go in to edit and change the thread color of, the, of those stitches that are emerald green and make them a lighter, say, blue. Let's do that and you can see what it looks like. So have fun playing with the stitches in your machine. Stitch it out. And when you stitch out blocks like this, even if you stitch it out on a nice muslin, what you'll find is you can take that and you can make a throw, you can make a table runner. It makes something very pretty and particularly when you take another type of fabric and you use it in between to help you finish up the size of your tablecloth. Thanks everyone, have a great day.